Hello. Yes, as we were introduced, I am Oscar German, um, and this is Helen Hong. Come on, come on, Helen, don't stand back. Um, so we're kind of involved with Chiasma Dunedin this year, um, and kind of as as we were introduced, I'm CEO and Helen is marketing manager, um, both honors students in the biochemistry department at the moment. So um, apologies for coming in late. We're kind of right in the middle of thesis writing stages. Um, but so unfortunately we haven't kind of got the insights into industry to offer you guys in terms of working in it. Um, but we are going to talk a little bit about what might make you better prepared to go into a, an industry position and get those kind of industry positions. Um, so first kind of a little bit about Chiasma and what we do. Um, Chiasma was actually started 14 years ago um, by a group of PhD students in Auckland who kind of saw a gap in the academic curriculum and kind of getting to know and getting involved with industry professionals. Um, so there was this whole kind of side of science that they weren't aware of and they couldn't get in contact with. So they started Chiasma as a way for them to get to know these industry professionals and to introduce students to opportunities beyond the academic space. And so this is kind of what the ethos that we've, we've worked around for the last 14 years in Dunedin, we've been established for about four, but it's really about connecting the students, the industry, and the academia, and about how we make ourselves more prepared to move into that scientific industry space. Um, and so, as Helen's very kindly changed this to, um, this is kind of achieved through three main things that we look at, is the skills, the knowledge, and the connections. And I think it's a discussion I've had with a number of people this year, is that kind of as science students, we're maybe better prepared than a lot of other degrees in terms of our transferable skills, but it's not something that maybe we're so good at picking up on during our degrees, whether it be kind of a master's, a PhD, a postdoc position. Um, and you kind of forget the kind of things you do in the lab require you to do a lot of learning that extends beyond the kind of specific topic that you're, you're researching um, in that space. So it's things like teamwork um, and problem solving, which are massively important and you do on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of progressing your research and, and analyzing data that you don't think about in a broader context. And it's actually things like this that are really important to those industry um, partners that you might look for employment with later on. Um, and we see this kind of reflect in the meetings that I go to um, during the year and talk to them about this. And it's actually science students are some of the best they've seen in terms of being able to problem solve and work as part of a group. Because by the time you get out, of your PhD or your postdoc position, you've been doing it for five, six years already. Um, and so the, the kind of the other big thing we work on is these connections. So it's all very well kind of having these skills, um, but how do you get to know about these industry opportunities and how do you meet with these people? And that's kind of another big problem that we see is that it's sometimes a little bit daunting kind of introducing yourself. How do you make that first email? How do you reach out to someone that you want to be in contact with? Um, and that's a lot of work that we've done um, over the years is to try and provide a neutral space for students and industry professionals to get connected and to introduce each other um, and kind of see what's going on. So it's great for us in terms that we get to meet these people, get our name out there, and also the industry professionals get to see what the university has to offer, the kind of the talent that it has, and that's us. We are the talent that the university has to offer. Um, and kind of as we see, um, and I think has kind of been alluded to, collaboration is a really important part of the way science is heading. And there's a number of big world problems that are going to become increasingly important in the next few decades. Um, to avoid being too political, I won't get into them. But um, they're, they're not going to be solved by any one person. And I think a capacity to network and connect with other people across the globe is going to be very, very important in terms of us reaching the best solution for those. And so it's these kind of things that really we try and highlight when we look at a networking kind of system and building your network is how many people can you get to know, who can you get to know that maybe five, ten years down the track you can call upon for advice or collaboration or potential employment as well. So that's a little bit about Chiasma and what we do. Um, I think Helen's going to give a little bit of a kind of rundown on one of the examples we've seen this year and kind of the power of networking and kind of the capacity we have to make change and um, see outcomes based on just a capacity to network. Cool. Well, thank you, Oscar. Um, so, hi, I'm Helen, and I'm just going to give a little anecdotal story of how the world really is 
quite small these days thanks to the power of the internet and just how simply reaching out can bring about something truly amazing. So, oh, I should have phased that one in, but oh well. <laughs> I'm sure a few of you might have heard about the 1.5 million strong um, phenomenon that is subtle Asian traits. It started off from about you know nine, uni nine Melbourne high school students last year and reached across the globe to connect together Asians who grew up in the Western world through means. <laughs> um, from Subtle Asian Traits, there were a lot of stem off groups, one of them being Subtle Asian Leftovers. Don't let the name get to you, it's just a pun. We're just you know, a group of people who are older than 20 and don't enjoy bubble tea memes every day. <laughs> so I got pulled into this group um, about November last year and I started posting just you know, little questions being like, drop your thoughts on this here, drop your thoughts on that there, just you know, trying to get thought provoking community building things going. And this kind of built and built and built to one post in particular a few months ago where I had asked people to give their career advice. I figured in a group of people who was, you know, there were about 30,000 people in this group at the time, ranging from 20 to 40 plus, I figured someone would have a good recommendation or two to give. There were many recommendations. I replied to all of them. It took me 15 hours. <laughs> I don't recommend doing it ever. But one that really stood out was from a man called Raid Ahmad. The name didn't mean anything to me at the time, but I had read his comment, which was very long, and the four main points, which I think are quite important to tell everyone, is to prioritize jobs through your early and mid-career that will hit you hard, push you, and give you opportunities to learn over a higher paycheck, which I think is something that we all consider when it comes to careers. Um, don't stay in your swim lanes, be relentless, you know? Be that person who goes out there and does things new, in a new way. Don't just follow the status quo if you don't agree with it. Your time is precious, so be super deliberate with what you do. And then, of course, what Kayasna's ethos is, people and relationships are everything in business. So I'd read that comment completely just freaked out. I was like, this is so cool. It was Friday night, midnight, and I sent it to Oscar and Maddie, our CEO, and I was like, look at this comment. It's great. We should tell um, you know, our Kayasna members this. And you know, they were stoked, and I was like, who is this man? Who is this person who's given us such great advice? So I clicked on his name, and to my astonishment, he is currently the head of data science and engineering for Calibra, the wallet app for Facebook's new blockchain cryptocurrency thing. Obviously, I don't do this kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> it's pretty obvious. I'm still trying to figure out you know, the details of it. But yeah, so what had happened was, you know, he is the head of this amazing new technology, just happened to drop a comment in some Facebook group that I was a part of, and we were like, why not reach out? So I liked his comment, said thank you, kind of dropped a little bit about what Chiasma was, asked if I could connect with him on LinkedIn. He was like, go for it. So I connected with him on LinkedIn, we chatted a bit, I passed him on to Oscar since he manages our industry connections as CEO. And it's been a few months and now he is about to call in on Thursday to give a video live Q&A for our students for free. That is the power of collaboration, that is the power of networking. We thought this was a great story to tell you guys because it really just highlights how serendipity and you know some, some groundwork can really get you a long way in the most unexpected kind of ways. So we do actually just want to take this opportunity to plug our <laughs> event on this day. <laughs> um, That's why she's marketing that. <laughs> <laughs> just going to slip it in. But yeah, so he's going to you know, call in for about an hour. If you guys are interested in asking questions but can't make it along, we will have a live stream available. And you can drop your questions in early through our registration slash question drop form, which can be found on the Facebook event. Search us up, Kayasma Dunedin. 
we are on there. And if you guys have any questions regarding Chiasma, what we do, or if you'd like to join us next year, since we are recruiting right now, please come find us afterwards or hit us up on Facebook or find us in the biochemistry department because we will be there for the next month. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.